Captivate eğitim videolarının tamamını izlemek için videoda sol üstte bulunan ikona tıklayınız. Açılan listeden Captivate eğitimi ile ilgili tüm videolara ulaşabilirsiniz. Bizi izlediğiniz için teşekkür ederiz. In this video, we will take a look at taking a Leica Viva GS series instrument out of its box and setting it up both on a tripod and also on a pole. Let's begin by taking a look at just how few components are required for a base and rover setup. Virtually all of the components that we require are going to be housed within the red container. However, there are some components that won't fit inside this box, such as the tripod and the pole as shown here. But as we can see, all of the components required for a base and rover setup can be carried by just one person. Next, we can open the Leica Viva GS box and take a look at what is inside. Straight away we can see that there are a number of different components inside the box. For example, the box contains space for documentation, cables, communication devices, communication accessories such as aerials, batteries, components to measure the height of an antenna or mount an antenna to a tripod, as well as components to mount the CS controller onto a pole including the pole clamp which we will remove now and also the CS holder plate which actually is currently attached to the CS controller itself. Perhaps the most obvious components held within this container are the antennas themselves. Here we have two Leica Viva GS14s therefore providing us with the ability to have both a rover and a base held within the same container. In fact it doesn't have to be a GS14 within this container it could just as easily be a GS15, as the container is designed such that either antenna type will fit. But for now, we'll put it back to housing two Leica Viva GS14s. Just as we demonstrated with the container's flexibility to house either a GS14 or a GS15 antenna, we have the same situation with the CS controllers. Currently we have a Leica CS20 field controller in the box, but we could easily replace that with a Leica CS35 field tablet. Now let's turn the box around and see what is held within the container's lid. After unfastening the straps, we can gain access to this area where we see that additional components are housed, including communication tools such as large antennas and mounts for those antennas and the communication module, and additional components such as spare or external batteries, a carrier to mount an antenna to a tribrack, and an external communication device. Depending on the GNSS antennas that we have, how we want to set them up and what we want to achieve, the contents of the box may differ as not all of the components shown here will always be needed. For example, the external communication device. In some cases, it simply wouldn't be required as the internal communication devices within the GNSS antennas would be more than sufficient. Now let's take a look at using some of this equipment to set up a GS as a base on a tripod. We will begin with a tripod securely set up in our desired location and then to that we will attach our tribrack. We will level and center the tribrack using the foot screws and optical plummet and then we will attach a GS carrier to it. With the carrier in place we can now screw on our GNSS antenna. Then if desired depending on our setup we can add the optional extras such as the external battery and a height hook so that if we have set up over a control point, we can measure how high above that point our antenna is, and also we can attach an external antenna for our internal communication device. Alternatively, we could have used an external communication device and used a cable to attach that to our GNSS antenna, but in this case, we don't need to. With the base components set up as desired, we then need to actually set it up in the software and start it transmitting our corrections. For this, we can use the Leica Captivate Field software and switch into base mode. From here, we can use settings and connections to connect to our base antenna. And also, we can set up the base defining if it is being set up over a known point, over the same point as last time, or over any position. With this done, we can switch to using the other components from our box and setting up a GS Rover on a pole. We will begin by screwing our GNSS antenna, in this case the Leica Viva GS14, onto the top of our pole. As this is a telescopic pole, it's easy for us to change its length as shown here. Next, we need to mount the clamp onto the pole. 
We do this by placing it on the bottom of the pole and sliding it up the pole to our desired position where we can then twist it to secure it in place. Now we can attach the CS's holder plate into the clamp simply by sliding it into place and then further tightening the clamp so it grips both the plate and the pole. Once that is done, we should make sure that the locking bolt of the plate is in the unlock position and then we can mount the CS to the plate. We do this by first lining up the base of the controller with the base of the plate and then pushing the CS down against the plate. Once it is in position, we can slide the locking bolt across so it is in the lock position and our controller is now securely attached to the plate and therefore to the pole. If we are not happy with the angle that our CS20 is in, we just need to slightly loosen the clamp so that we can adjust it to our required angle before we tighten it back up again. As mentioned previously, we don't have to be using a Leica CS20 field controller, we could just as easily be using a Leica CS35 field tablet. If that is the case, the procedure of mounting it is almost the same. The differences are, we use a different holder plate, as shown, and then we slide the CS35 into this plate from the right to the left before twisting the lock to ensure that it is a secure fit. With this done, we are ready to turn on our CS device, be it the CS20 or the CS35, to then connect to our GNSS antenna, start receiving RTK corrections and get to work. If we've used the GNSS antenna before, it will connect automatically. If we haven't, we can just go through like a Captivate simple wizard to establish the pairing. And if we haven't previously configured it, we can also use the RTK connection wizard now in order to establish our RTK communications. Of course, if we've done this configuration previously, then all we need to do is turn on the equipment and we are ready to go. After we have completed our work for the day, we'll probably want to remove the CS from the pole in order to store it or transport it. To do this, the process is very simple. For a CS20, all we need to do is slide the locking bolt on the holder plate to the unlocked position, and then first by pushing down on the controller and then pulling away from the plate, we can remove the Leica CS20. If we had been using the Leica CS35 field tablet, then the process is also easy. We just twist to undo the lock and then lift the right hand side of the CS35 out before pulling the whole device from left to right. Now that we have seen what is held within a GS container and how to set this equipment up on both a tripod and a pole, we can bring this video to a close.